welcome to Watercolours with Caroline and this week we're going to be painting a crow or a study of different crows. This one actually looks a bit more like a raven because when I was searching for images of crows there were more ravens than there were crows and I found out that in the northwest here we have a special northwest crow which is just slightly different from the American crow. Anyway, this is based on a necklace that I have. So I'm sort of basing the design on that with the strip, the vertical strip that is one and a half inches wide just behind the crow. I'm using a little sticker to mask out the moon. That It makes a much sharper, rounder image than trying to do that with masking fluid. I'm gonna mix two light gray colors. One is mixed with cobalt blue, permanent rose and raw sienna. And the second one is mixed with phthalo blue permanent rose and raw sienna. Now don't put too much thalo blue in there because it's a very strong color and it will overtake your painting. You need to wet the painting all over for your first very light gray coverage and we're going with the cobalt blue gray first and that's going over pretty much everything on the paper so that the crow gets a little bit of gray on its feathers and the background is a very very light gray color. This will dry lighter than it is, so pretty light. And this layer has to be dry before you put the second layer of the phthalo blue gray, which is cooler. Now really, I should have used a flat brush for this. Got a bit carried away and picked up my big mop brush, but that's okay, it has a nice point on it. And I want to put some of this gray on the crow too. I don't want a straight line right through the middle of him. That would be too obvious throughout the whole painting. So I'm covering him with a little bit of this phthalo blue cool gray. And I'll do the strip on the other side. I'm just dabbing off with my Kleenex. A little bit of highlight on his back. And I'm going to carefully go down the other side. And now you can paint, if you make sure you put that sticker on firmly. You can paint over the top of it and it will keep a nice bright clean circle on your watercolour paper. This is a 140 pound Ash cold press, just a medium one. Now I am going to paint the strip in a moiré interference colour in a, in a blue and it won't show up very much on the top of the grey but it will have a shimmer to it, just a bluish shimmer and it it will catch the light. You can use all kinds of different paints. You don't have to use the fine tech. You can get cheaper iridescent paints. You can get iridescent powder like Pearl X. You can use perfect pearls. I like to add a little bit of gum Arabic powder to those to make sure that they stick. But this one is the fine tech paint in the blue and I'm just painting that, not going to paint it on the crow, just behind him. And really when I'm filming it, you can't see much change of color, but when it's dry, it will have that beautiful iridescence. And in fact, I did put on two coats when this coat was dry. I put on a second coat to make sure. Now you can see as I tip the one that I've done previously, it does shimmer. It shimmers a lot more if you paint it on black paper. You can see the actual color of it it looks sort of yellow when you paint it on the white paper, but definitely you can see the blue on the black paper. And I'm going to paint some other ones. That's fine tech silver mixed with a fine tech blue. And again, on the paper, it looks sort of just a silver gray. You can buy a, you can buy a Winsor & Newton make an iridescent medium. Just a, um, You can mix it with any paint to make any color iridescent. I think it's about $12, $15 a bottle, something like that. I'm going to use the perfect pearls white. You can see how beautiful and clean that circle is. You can leave it just plain like that, but I'm going to mix a little of the perfect pearls with some gum arabic powder and some water and I'm going to make my moon just shimmery. So it's a different color to the interference blue that's in the background. I have a little bit on the eye and the beak of the crow. So for the very first layer of the crow I want him to have some blues this is ultramarine blue and I will have a little phthalo blue as well and some deep purple, diaxazine purple or di diaxazine violet. I noticed that different brands call it either violet or purple. 
but it's that lovely strong colour. You can mix a beautiful violet colour too if you mix your thalo blue with a permanent rose or cobalt blue with a permanent rose. But I really like the dioxazine purple, it's so strong. And this is quite a translucent layer, quite a bit of water. I want to have some shimmer on the crow's back and a little bit of shimmer on the chest, reflected light. But I don't want it to be pure white, I want it to have these colours in it. And every layer that you put down of colour, because it's translucent paint, will show through all your final layers. So getting a little darker with an ultramarine and a bit of thalo blue to get a little darker for the underside of the wing feathers and the tail. They have quite a broad tail. And I will, of course, be putting on more layers for this crow. Now, I want that to dry before I work on another layer. But while that's drying, I can work on the branch and the, and the fine branches. So I'm going to mix burnt sienna with ultramarine blue and a little bit of thalo blue to darken it up. Some violet in there, de-violet to darken it up. You can add a little bit of alizarin crimson. All those dark transparent colors but not much water if you want that branch to be nice and dark don't add much water to it and I'm gonna start with a little bit of that color on the dark part of the crow and then when that's drying I will paint the branches I do the crow in three or four layers and um, some of the some of the dark dark black or gray that you mix can be heavy on blue so it's a blue gray and in other places, the, the crow's feathers will look more brown and you can add more burnt sienna to that gray so that you have a variety of grays with the same mix of colors. But just by adding a little bit more burnt sienna, you'll warm up the gray. By adding a little bit more purple, you'll cool it down, make it more colorful. By adding a little bit more ultramarine and thalo blue, you'll really darken it up, make it a very blue gray. But do be really careful with the thalo blue. It is a strong color and you can't um, lift it like you can the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue you can lift from your paper, but the thalo blue will stain. And so will the, the D-violet, the deoxazine violet, that will stain too. But I know that I want the belly of the crow to be nice and dark and under the tail put the dark areas in first that way you can you can decide how dark you want to go on the wings and don't forget to leave those highlights on the back and on the wings now I'm adding more burnt sienna to that gray to make it browner on the back of the crow because of the moonlight that is lighting up the feathers it's not a realistic composition. It's based on, like I say, my necklace. So just doing what was there, something attractive. I, I didn't use masking fluid for anything. I just used the sticker to mask the moon. It's a half inch sticker. So if you did want to hand draw, if you don't have a sticker handy and you want to hand draw the circle, it's a half inch diameter. My first one, the one that you see on the left, was a hand-drawn circle. I didn't have any stickers with me when I did that. And you can see it's not as clean as the sticker circle. And I had no masking fluid with me either, so I had to just carefully paint around it. Now I'm adding my mix for the black, the brown, black, grey, black will remain the same. It's going to be that mixture of the ultramarine blue, thalo blue, burnt sienna, some violet. And that's pretty much it. You just vary the different amounts that you put in there. Cobalt blue, if you want a lighter blue for, say, the feet, cobalt blue is not as strong. And for the feet and legs, I will still be putting more darks on when that layer is dry. And at the very end for the eye and the little details, I will use my Pigma pen to just sharpen up the details on the eye and make a few 
very fine branches in the background. Now I want the branch that the crow is sitting on to be nice and strong so I'm using my my mixture really full strength with very little water and a number two brush or a rigger brush. A rigger brush is lovely for making the branches. I think I switched to that in a moment remembering that that, that would be more useful. And I want a variety of strong dark black branches and then I'm going to add more water and a little bit more blue to my mix to make some lighter branches in the background. Now this one I'm just not touching my brush to the surface as strongly as with the other branches. And you have to make sure that the amount of branches you have are, are balanced, not too many. You don't want to hide your grow amongst too many branches. You don't want them all to be thick and heavy. That will really detract from your crow. Your crow is your center of interest. So if you have lots of very thick, heavy, dark branches, the focus will be on the branches, not on the crow. And also, when you're designing something like this and designing your branches, you want them to sort of be pointing towards your crow, your center of interest in your painting. Your eye should be led in by the ar sort of arrows of the branches saying, look, look in this direction and if they're going off the paper which some of them should do then others should be coming onto the paper to balance that and bring your eye back into the picture so you have to think about these things and plan them don't just get carried away really enjoying yourself painting branches which is easy to do you have to stop at some point and think, I need space. I need some space around the crow. And I need space that is interesting and well designed. And I drew, I drew a lot of my branches beforehand so that I know where I'm going so I don't get lost. And sometimes if I look at it and it doesn't seem quite right, I will add a few more branches after I've completed the drawing. Now this color I'm using now, same color, but I've added more water and I'm going very, very lightly with my brush. Now here I am with my 01.01 Pigma pen and I'm gonna sharpen up the eye on the crow with that and sharpen up a little bit of the beak. And when I was looking at the studies of crows, I see that they have very interesting feathers at the top and underneath of their beak. Thank you for watching.